Welcome to Presidential Fight Club, the show that answers the question, if all 44 presidents fought each other one-on-one, who would win? Hosted by two history professors who have too much time on their hands, Scott Rank and James Early. Hey everyone, welcome to the Southeastern Regional. We're going to see one of our presidents who were seated to the second round, Andrew Jackson. He's taking on a returning champion, James Buchanan, who triumphed over Woodrow Wilson. James, can you please tell me how James Buchanan is going to take out Andrew Jackson? It would (laughs) take a miracle. (laughs) He would have to have a pocket grenade or something. (laughs) Oh, it's going to be tough. I tell you what, am I, I'm on Buchanan this time. I, I've got to defend Buchanan or, or are you going to do Jackson first? Uh, you defend Buchanan. Let's go. Or do you want me to talk about Jackson? So we know what Buchanan's no, I'll do into. Buchanan. Let's get Buchanan right, out of the way. <laughs> this won't take long. Well, well, Buchanan was uh, a pretty big guy for that day and age. It's still, I mean, six feet tall is 200 pounds. That's still above average today. Um, other than that, there's not much we can say for him. He had no military experience that I, I think, you know what? Actually, I think he served actually as a, now that I think about it, as an enlisted man uh, in some militia unit or something at some point. I, I seem to remember now, that's a fun fact that Buchanan was the only U.S. president who served in the military, but not as an officer. So there you go. He was a private when he was very young, but he didn't do that for very long. And I don't know that he saw a lot of action, if any action. Uh, I don't remember all the details on it. But the point is, is that he was not a fighter. Buchanan was more of a uh, he was more of a party guy. You know, <laughs> He liked parties. Uh, he liked fine food. He liked high society. Uh, he was more of a a bookish kind of guy, although he wasn't really famous for having a brilliant intellect, either like a Jefferson or a Wilson or a, and what, either the Adams is. Uh, Buchanan liked his liquor. He was mighty close to the bottle. And so his one hope is that uh, maybe he could sneak some liquor down Jackson's throat while he's not looking. <laughs> maybe take him out that way or just say, hey, look over there. It's Henry Clay. What? And then tackle him. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it's John C. Calhoun. Quick, go hang him. Uh, and as he turns around, take him out. But other than that, um, it's not looking good for Jimmy Buchanan. I think he's one of our frat boy presidents we've had. So there's uh, yes. there's Harding. He's one. Buchanan. Um, who else? I guess Martin Van Buren. He was another one. Yeah, he was a party guy. Uh, definitely. I'm trying to. I mean, Kennedy to a certain oh, extent. Yeah. Uh, Franklin Pierce drank a lot. But I don't know if it was a party or a violent drunk kind of drinking. I forget. Yeah. So that's a uh, so he's one of the frat boys for whatever that's worth. If his uh, brothers can back him up in the fight, but he can't because it's one on one. So, well, Andrew Jackson. Well, what is there to say? He is he is a mean sob in the southern sense where it can be a compliment or an insult depending on what context you're talking about. He's a skinny guy. He's six foot one. He was between 140 and 150 pounds. Wild hair. And he had probably one of the most fiery tempers of any presidents. And that has to do with all sorts of reasons. You can psychoanalyze him. He grew up fatherless. He might have felt more obliged to prove his strength and manliness in South Carolina and later Tennessee. One uh, way that showed itself is he was very, very competitive in the frontier sport of wrestling. One contemporary who squared off against Jackson would say, I could throw him three times out of four, but he would never stay throwed. And another neighbor, <laughs> Stay prone. Prone. I like that. that's a good way to say it. Uh, so he was unbalanced. He was excitable. He was indis- insecure. He was defensive. He was taken captive by the British during the Revolutionary War. And maybe I'll mention that story at some other time because there's so many about him that I don't want to burn through them all at once. Um, but just to describe his temper with Jackson, one um, biographer, Robert Romini, said that when Andrew Jackson hated, it often became a grand passion. He could hate with the biblical fury and would resort to petty and vindictive acts to nurture his hatred and keep it bright and strong and ferocious. And Martin Van Buren, who was a close advisor, was 
just marveled at how Jackson could turn his anger on and off at will. So one minute he's screaming at a cabinet member. And then the next moment after he leaves, he'll relax and crack jokes with Martin Van Buren. So Mm -hmm. he could be, he could have decor and share some backwards humor and uh, be decorous as possible when women were around in polite society. But then at the drop of the knife, he would, or drop of a hat, he would get into a duel with someone which he did. He is, I think, recorded nine duels in his life. And at the end of his life, they said that he rattled around with all the bullets that he carried in his body. So um, I'll probably save some of the duel stories for future, but fought multiple duels, was a hearty wrestler, ferocious temper. In one sense, he resembles Donald Trump in that members of society were scared at the prospect of him being president for this a mountain man coming into office who knows what he could do when he's elected. So that's my reason for why Andrew Jackson would win this rough Scotch Irish mountain man. James, does he defeat James Buchanan? Oh, just slightly. (laughs) This was absolutely one of our most one-sided battles we've had so far. He absolutely wipes the floor with Buchanan. It's a one rounder folks. He, this was, this was a, a shutout, I, or maybe Buchanan got one sympathy vote. In fact, I think he did. We had one person from Pennsylvania <laughs> who stuck up for Buchanan as our only president from Pennsylvania, but it was something like 50 to one. So yes, Jackson uh, in a landslide. Okay, well, Jackson definitely advances. In the next fight, we're going to see Monroe versus a returning fighter, Johnson. See you there. Thanks for listening to Presidential Fight Club. If you'd like to download your own printable bracket sheets for each regional tournament so you can guess how the tournament will go, check out presidentialfightclub.com. We'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for listening, and may you fight with the stamina of Teddy Roosevelt, the courage of George Washington, and the reach of Abraham Lincoln.